Hey everybody, welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. So, we have got three new properties premiering in Timberon this week. Uh, at this point in the year, however, I have done roughly 17 Timberon videos, where I've said pretty much the exact same thing every time. So, in the interest of not being that redundant, uh, and in the interest of perhaps perhaps making these videos moderately entertaining, uh, I decided to do a different video this week. We're going to do Timberon FAQ. Timberon FAQ. So these are 22 of the most frequently asked questions that I get from people who write emails or people who call our offices about land in Timberon. Um, if you want, uh, if you want a video that's more about how to better research the land out there, how to how to understand better things about power and water and whatnot, I'd encourage you to view any one of the other videos that we have up on on these Timberon listing pages. Or just go to our YouTube channel, pull up any one of our Timberon videos, and you'll hear me regurgitate pretty much the same talking points. Uh, this video, however, will be about 22 frequently asked questions. I should just have you guys know, uh, most of these are frequently asked good questions, FAGQs. Uh, there will, however, also be in here some FADQs, frequently asked dumb questions. Uh, I will let you discern which is which, but I will answer all of them as I do on the phone with a smile. Here we go. Question number one, where is this property located, Hemingway Land? So I get this most commonly from people who find us on the land listing sites and don't click the link to actually get to our website, or people who find us on Craigslist and can't for some reason copy and paste a link. So as with all of our listings, come down here, click any one of the GPS coordinates. It will bring the property up on the Google Maps. You'll be able to see where it is located, and you will be able to analyze, zooming and scrolling, what is around it, how to get to it, etc. Uh, that brings us to the second question. Can we schedule a time to go see this property? So I am not a realtor. I am not a broker. I am an investor. I buy land. I sell land. And I do not have offices in New Mexico. So I will not be giving you any guided tours of this property, nor do I have anybody out there who can. Some of our properties are represented by, by a realtor. Uh, none of the Timberon ones are. So what I encourage anybody to do, anybody who's going to give me a couple thousand dollars to buy property, please, in advance, go out, scout the land. If you have the time to lay eyes on these things, please do. I encourage you to do it. You can go any time of any day that you like. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, but there are three good ways to scout these properties. So the first is just bring it up here on the map, eyeball it. You can figure it out. Most of these are pretty easy to figure out. You come in, you make a left, you make a right, whatever. Uh, go out to the, to the land. The second way is bring the listing page up on your smartphone when you drive out there. Click the GPS coordinates and your smartphone should give you turn by turn directions. Now, sometimes cell service in different areas is not reliable. Sometimes our cell providers are not reliable. So the best way, the one I always recommend to people is when you have Google Maps pulled up, just click on this directions button over here and enter your start point, whether that's your home address or the hotel you're staying at when you're in the region. And Google Maps will give you turn-by-turn -turn directions out to the land. You can print these. You could take them out with you as a form of backup just to make sure that you've got proper directions out to the property. But yes, anyone who's interested in looking at these properties, please go ahead and scout them at your leisure. Um, I'm going to bring up a photo gallery here while I blather on with the rest of this so we can look at, at the very least, pretty pictures of Timberon. So here we go. Uh, question number three, is the property surveyed? The property has not been surveyed by us. Uh, obviously, it was surveyed many years ago when they subdivided the entire region. Uh, so there are, you know, there is documentation that exists on a survey somewhere in the county files, uh, but I have not had one done. Next question, why don't you have a survey? So I don't get surveys for a number of reasons. The first is that all the information you see on the website, uh, as far as property location and the dimensions of the property and the size and the shape and whatnot, that all comes from uh, software that we have that interfaces with the county database. Uh, in the various New Mexico counties. Uh, so for our purposes, I'm able to represent the land pretty well. Uh, I don't need it surveyed. I don't need a surveyor to tell me anything about these. Um, furthermore, I always say to people that, uh, well, actually, let me say this. I don't know what my end buyer is going to do or what they're going to want. I don't know that they'll need a survey. So uh, I always recommend that if the end buyer wants a survey, it's best that they pay for it themselves. Because the other thing here is that if I'm paying whatever, $1,000 for a survey, I'm just going to add 2000 to the sales price of the property. So it's ultimately cheaper for you, the buyer, to fund the survey if that's something you require. Next, is the property staked? So uh, I don't sell these properties promising that, oh, yeah, yeah, there's totally stakes out there. That being said, my supposition is that because the land, um, you know, 
So this master plan community, I would assume that there are stakes out there. Now, of course, whatever stakes were put there were put there 50 some years ago. And, uh, you know, some may not exist. Some may have been torn out. Some may be, o may be overgrown to the point that you can't find them. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're out there, but again, I don't like to represent the properties as if they as if they are. Okay. Next, can I use the GPS coordinates on the listing page to figure out the boundaries? Well, here's the thing, people. Um, I think the corner points that we list on every listing page are, will probably put you pretty close, probably within like three feet of what the what the actual corner point of the property is. That being said, uh, you have to understand it's a one-dimensional map on a three-dimensional globe, and there is going to be some room for error here. So uh, I always recommend to anybody, if you're going to build on the land, particularly if you're going to put up a fence saying that this right here is my property and that right there is not, it's best that you get a surveyor to confirm that for you and uh, not work strictly off the GPS coordinates that we provide. They're good, they're helpful, they're fairly accurate, but they're not surgically precise. So... FYI. Next, do you have any photos of the land? I love this question. So to anybody who's new to the website on all of our listing pages, if you just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, you will see a photo gallery of photos taken from the property or from basically, you know, around the property. There's property specific photos and then there's local color as we call it. Okay, so local color would be like these first few photos that are like the area and then there's property specific photos. And some of you may be saying, who doesn't know their photos on these? I don't know. I don't know. But I get this question all the time. Do you have photos? And then I have to say, did you scroll down? And they're like, oh, hey, look, there's photos. I'm like, yeah, I know. So, yes, we have photos. Next, do you have any other photos of the same property? No. Uh, I don't send the photographer out, have him take 200 photos, and then only list 15. Whatever photos he takes, that's what I put up on the listing page. So there are no secret photos. There are no hidden photos. There's no spare folder of photos that I haven't put on the website. Uh, next, do you own the property next to this one? No, I do not. If I own the property next to the property that you're looking at, it would be written on the listing page or I would be selling them as one. So for instance, on what I call small dollar properties like this, where a half acre would be $2,500, I would say this is a one acre property. It's a combination of two adjacent acres, two adjacent half acres, and we're selling it for 5,000. Or I would put something in the text of the listing like, hey, if you also want to buy the property next to this and have one full acre, you can pay us 5000 for both. Uh, recently, we listed some properties in Sierra County that are so expensive uh, that I felt most people wouldn't want the additional acreage, so I listed them separately, but I made notes on every listing page about that. Point being, if you're looking at our timber on inventory and you're wondering if any of these are adjacent, they're not, otherwise they'd be listed that way. Next. Uh, do you have any secret timber on properties you're not telling us about? So I get calls all the time from people who, th who uh, think that uh, I have a whole inventory of lands that I'm not putting on this website, that I've got 200 properties that I don't bother to list. Uh, no. Everything that we buy, we list. We list it pretty quickly. Um, oftentimes before we get recorded deeds back from the county because the county takes so long with that. But uh, yeah, this is, that's my gig. I buy land, I sell land. There are no secret hidden properties that I'm not listing. Next, uh, can I camp or RV on this land? Yes, yes you can. So in Timberon, if you're buying a property that uh, doesn't have waterline hookups, you can camp or RV on the land for 30 days. If, however, you're looking at some of our inventory, all of which has available waterline hookups, you can camp or RV on the property for 180 days. And as I have remarked in other videos, I don't know how anybody enforces 180 days. I don't know that anybody shows up with a stopwatch on day one and, you know, times you for how long you're out there. But that is the formal rule that I have seen written in a number of places. So we'll go with that and just say anticipate on day 181 you have to move for 24 hours and come back. I don't know. Anyway, uh, next, is there power on the property? So in all of the listings we have it indicated. Um, let me go back to the listing page for a second. Uh, up here at the top of the listing page in the property specific notes, we will have notations about whether there is power on the property or pretty close to the property. It's also noted here in the table. I will also say to you guys that all of these half acre lots we're currently selling in Timberon either have property at the lot line or they're like one or two lots over. So, next. Question number 13. How much does it cost to get hooked up to power? Okay. So uh, I have no experience with this myself. I have never gotten this done. What I have heard 
uh, from realtors in the area is that if the property you're building has a foundation, uh, the local power company will come out and hook you up for free. If the property has no foundation, it is $2,800 for two power poles. I don't think they come out and only put up one power pole for $1,400. I think you should anticipate spending about $2,800 on that. Now, if you have questions about that uh, and you want to verify what I'm saying, and again, this is just what I've heard, I don't know. Uh, come down here, click on the Otero County Electric Cooperative's website. It'll bring it up here. Uh, you can call them. You can ask them personally. and You can say, hey, I'm looking to buy some vacant land in Timbron. I'm looking to get power hooked up to it. There's power either at the lot line or one or two lots over. What is that going to cost me? And they can give you a better sense of pricing on that. Next, question number 14. How does the water situation work? So all of the half-acre lots we're currently listing in Timbron have water available to them, which is to say that they are lots that are serviced by the Timbron Water and Sanitation District. And I know this because I had to pay the water bills on all these before we bought them. Now, that being said, if you go out to the property, I don't believe you're going to find a pipe sticking out of the ground that's like, hey, this is the water pipe. Um, I think certain streets have a blue water valve, and from that, the TWSD does something with it to get water out to the property. I don't know. Clearly, I'm not an expert nor am I at all mechanically inclined. So again, I recommend come up here, explore these links, Timbron Development Council, Timbron Water and Sanitation District. Click on either one of these. It's going to bring up their respective websites. Give them a call. If you have specific questions about what is this going to cost, I believe the uh, connection fee is nominal. I think it's like $30 or $60. Uh, but reach out to them. Say, I'm looking to buy some property. It's in you know unit whatever, block whatever, lot whatever. Uh, what is it going to cost for me to get water out there? I understand that that property is serviced by your organization, but I, I want to know exactly before I go ahead and buy it. And then they can talk you through that better than better than we can, or at least in a more formative manner than I can. Uh, next, what are my options for septic? <laughs> I'm going to go back to the listing page again. So up here at the top of every listing page, we have um, this note about septic. So all of these properties we're currently selling are under three quarters of an acre. These are all half acre lots. And while these are defined as buildable lots because they have local utilities, um, septic options are, are a little more strict or a little more limited uh, to things such as advanced treatment units, uh, split flow systems, and ET beds. Now, this is something, it's not made up by Timbron, it's made up by the New Mexico Environmental Department. Uh, that being said, if you go to the Timbron website, come up here, click on Land for Sale, New Construction, Power, and Septic, it'll bring up this thing here where it talks about, uh, basically we stole all this information from their website and put it on our website, but uh, it tells you about septic options, but it also tells you about who specifically you can contact in the New Mexico EPA and ask them about this specific region, Timberon, about you know what sort of rules you have to abide by to uh, install a septic system that's up to code, or whatever other alternative systems there are out there, whatever you know, quote-unquote green options there are for septic. So I'd encourage you guys, again, to check out the Timbron website. Check out specifically this information that they give you about septic. If your plan is to go out there and build and install something like that, these are uh, good resources for you. Next, back to our photo gallery. Here we go. Um, is there a time limit to build? Okay, so this is a question I get all the time. I never understand this question. I don't think it's a bad question. I think there's going to be somewhere in America where this applies, where this is applicable. But uh, I have never, ever, ever heard of any time limit to build anywhere on anything. I don't understand how that would work. I don't know if somebody shows up from the county, again, with a stopwatch, and times you from the day you buy the land. To, oh, it's been one year. You can never build on this ever again. I don't know what people are anticipating when they ask me that question. But no, there is no time limit to build on these properties. You could buy them, leave them vacant for the next five years, and then go build on it, or build on it six months from now, or whatever. But the point is no one is going to... I don't know, fine you or tell you you can never build on this again because you didn't meet the building deadline. Uh, next, can I build a tiny home? Okay, let's go back to the listing page for this one. So on each of our listing pages, we have up here uh, the CCRs, the Covenants and Restrictions for Timberon. Now, each of these Timberon properties is in a different unit, and each unit has their own specific requirements. Most of these requirements are not very strict. A lot of these are what I call obvious good neighbor stuff. You will, however, notice in most of these, they have things such as minimum floor area uh, or minimum square footage to the structure that's on the property, and they'll stipulate what that is. Some of these, it's 1,200. Some of these, it's 900. It may be less on others. I don't know. But uh, depending on your version, your definition of what a tiny home is, 
If it's at least 900 square feet, then yes, you can do it. Uh, but I would review the covenants on any listing page where you're serious about buying that specific property. Review the covenants and see what the uh, minimum square footage requirements are. And that'll give you a better indication of whether or not you can put up a tiny home out there. Um, if your definition of tiny is 400, 600 feet, my guess is no. Uh, but again, this might be something you might want to call the Timber on Development Council about. Maybe they've, maybe they've become more lax in their rules since those covenants were written. I don't know. Next, can I build a shipping container on the property? My guess is yes. Uh, my guess is as long as it meets the minimum square footage requirements, I don't see anything in any covenants or restrictions that would... Um, um, what's the word that would, I don't know, not allow you to do that. Uh, obviously there's building codes in the state of New Mexico. So you have to talk to the, um, uh, you know, the building department about that. But, um, Timbron would not necessarily tell you how to build your shipping container home. Uh, but my guess is if it meets a minimum square footage requirement and it's, and it's up to all other construction standards, uh, then you should be fine. Next, do you offer financing? All right. So uh, we get this question a lot about our Timbron properties, about all of our properties. I don't like to do financing, guys. Uh, I will do financing if somebody could put down a 50% deposit because then usually, then I can afford to do it. Um, <clears throat> what I will tell you, however, is there are people who do what I do who pray, pray that their buyers will all take the financing option. And the reason is because most people will default. Uh, if they're paying $100 a month for however many months, eventually somebody's going to default. And the property that was originally listed for $2,500, the investor can resell and resell and resell and eventually make, you know, five or 7000 on or whatever. Uh, that is not how I want to make my money. Uh, simultaneously, I don't want to be tracking people down every month or listening to sob stories about why they can't give me $100, uh, you know, in the next 30 days. Uh, so I don't like to do financing. Again, if somebody put down a 50% deposit, I can work with them on that. Um, but generally speaking, uh, it's usually more hassle than it's worth. Next. Here we go. Here's, this is a good question. How do I buy this property, Hemingway Land? Uh, and then I say, uh, come up here and click the buy now button. And they say, what buy now button? And I say, it's at the top of the page. It's turquoise. It's right below the photo, right below the price. It says buy now. And they're like, I don't see it. And then about five minutes later, they find it and then they'll click it and they'll be like, oh my God, look at that. Anyway, click the buy now button, guys. Come to this page, enter uh, information for the deed, information for the tax address, uh, fill out all this uh, information on the next page, uh, enter credit card information and congratulations, you will have purchased the property. Uh, within 24 hours, you'll receive documentation from us, including a copy of a new deed, which we'll need you to approve once you approve it. We will autograph and notarize and get it recorded for you. And uh, from start to finish, it's about three weeks before it'll be in your hand because it has to go to the county first and they have to record it. But um, from the time that you give us money, as far as we are concerned, you own the land, go out there, uh, have, you know, have fun, go and not start building. Okay, next, back to our photo gallery. Uh, number 21, here we go. Okay, uh, so I don't trust or own credit cards. How else can I pay you? So this question comes from people who don't own credit cards. Uh, they only trust cash and they want to know how they can get me cash. Uh, so as we say here on, on, I don't know, one of my pages, I say that I can accommodate anyone's comfortability level. I can accommodate anyone's financial instrument. If you don't have plastic with which to pay, you can pay through PayPal. You can wire me money. Uh, you can do a Western Union wire, but I find that Walmart wire transfers are shockingly simple. Like really, I've had a few people do these and it's, it's always amazing how quickly this goes through. Uh, I think all you need from me is the uh, information, um, what state is the Walmart you're sending the money to in, in which case the answer would be Nevada. Uh, but those are actually really easy. Uh, if you have some other notions about how to pay, yeah, we can work it out. Uh, I'd prefer you not send me a check. I'd prefer you not do a wire from your bank. I find that most banks are so, <clears throat> what's the word? They're so skittish about doing wires. They're so skittish about fraud that even when you're trying to access your own money and do a wire, they're still going to grill you and pretty much make sure that you eventually don't do the wire. Um, I'm a professional investor. I do at least three wires a week for large sums of money to professional title companies. And my bank, even though they see me every day in my life, will still ask me, are you sure you want to wire this? Are you sure this is a, yeah, it's good. All right, just send the money. So um, I discourage wires. Um, 
you want to pay me, I'd say cash is the easiest. Walmart money transfers are pretty easy, but I can work with you on anything. Next, this is my favorite. I don't trust you. How do I know you own this property? Prove it to me. So here's the deal, guys. In the history of people asking me this ridiculous question, um, uh, what I have discovered is that the people who ask the question never have any real way of verifying for themselves if what you're telling them or showing them is, is the truth, is real. They never know. So even when I provide a recorded deed, even when I provide a copy of the insurance policy from the title company, if there was a title company involved, uh, even if I can pull up county documentation that says, here's my company that owns this, they still refuse to believe me. So uh, even, if, even if Jesus were resurrected and came back and said to these guys, I vouch for Hemingway land, they totally own this property, they'd be like, mm, I don't know about this Jesus guy. So generally, we don't end up doing business with those people. That being said, uh, I encourage anybody, if you're skeptical, do these people actually own this property? Are they going to convey it to me when I give them money? If you're worried about that, just close through a title company. The benefits here are, number one, uh, uh, we're not going to be able to touch your money until the property is recorded into your name. And number two, um, second benefit, of course, is that if we don't own the property, if we're faking this, this is, if this is all part of some elaborate ruse, uh, the title company will be able to figure it out for you, okay? They're not going to take your money and then mess up and be like, oh, sorry, we gave it to those people who didn't own the land. So if you have... Any trepidations about this, just tell us you want to close through a title company. Now, all that being said, we're going to ask you for a deposit up front because title companies are going to take forever, 30 days, uh, to do something we could do in a day. So uh, if that's the case, we'll ask for a deposit on properties of this price range, $2,500. We'll probably ask for about $250, something like that, $500 maybe. Uh, depends what mood I'm in when you call me, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you're worried about that, just insist on closing through title. Anyway, guys, I hope all that was helpful. Those are the 22 most frequently asked questions that I get in phone calls and emails. Hopefully, they answered uh, one of your questions. Uh, but if you have any more you'd like to add to that, just uh, leave a comment here on the YouTube channel. Uh, shoot us an email at support at HemingwayLand.com or give us a call 702-919-7170. Uh, look forward to doing business with you guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.